We want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. The name, the name that's above any name, not any name, every name. And, uh, you know, it's so, it's just really a pleasure for my, my wife and myself. I'm Kenny, it's my wife, Jane. And, you know, if we're here in this upper room, just sharing stories. And, you know, I, I always think of like in the Bible, you see the different stories that Jesus shared you know, when he was here on the earth in the Gospels. And how these stories had, as we look at them, we see so many things. And it tells us about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. You know, it says the kingdom of God is, uh, is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. And, you know, how do you, it's invisible. And yet, you know, uh, God talked to, to Moses and said, you know, you'll see, you'll see those things that are invisible, and you will see these things. And, you know, it's kind of like a, a almost like a, how can you see something that's invisible? But yet this invisible world is more real than this physical world that we're in right now. You know, this physical world someday is going to be wrapped up and a, a no whole new world will be made by him. And what a, you know, what a glorious thing. We're talking about heaven. You know, and uh, it was brought to mind, you know, there was, um, <clears throat> who has gone on before us and even told us a little bit of a glimpse of it. And there's, there's a lot of stories out there of a lot of people that have died and gone and have come back to this life. You kind of go on, well, what, um, you know, at first I couldn't understand how this works. I mean, we're, we're a three-part person. We have a body, we have a mind spirit, I mean a mind soul, what we think with, and we have a spirit over here. And our spirit side is dead until the day that we receive Jesus. When we, we believe upon him, this is the part that becomes alive. This is the part that God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within this body into our spirit. And, you know, now that he's here, he starts talking to us and telling us the wonderful things about Jesus. And, you know, some of the things, you can talk about the heavens and the, and all the different things that are going on. And what I was just I was thinking about is uh, there was, I read a book, it was called 90 Minutes in Heaven, and the author is Don Piper. And uh, if you go on YouTube, you can just type in YouTube up in the little search bar, and it's just a 90 minute, or uh, Don Piper, P-I-P-E-R, 90 Minutes in Heaven, and you'll see um, a bunch of different little links in there where he's speaking at different churches, and there's a couple of them in there that are about nine minutes long. And there's one with an interview with Pat Robertson. I think that was just so precious. And when they were there and he, you know, Pat welcomes him. Pat's the, the founder and the, the leader of, over at uh, seven, the 700 Club that you probably see on Christian television. Anyway, the, he was asking, welcome, Don. And he said, welcome. He says, he says, he says, first of all, he says, he says, what was it like going to heaven? And, well, let's first, how did he get there? He says, this is something, you know, and because uh, I'd read the book, and uh, it was real fascinating, but I read the book several years ago. And at that time, I understood some of it, but this time I could understand more because there's, there's some more, there's just more to it. Anyway, what had happened, he was a pastor in Texas, USA, and he was coming back from a retreat on a Wednesday afternoon, and they were going to go back to have evening services. And he was in his car about noontime, and he was going down a little Texas road, went across the bridge. It was a narrow bridge, and on came a semi, and the semi just ran right over his car. And he says, one breath I was here, the next breath I was in heaven. I was standing by those golden gates, and there's 12 golden gates, and he was there by the one. And he was there, you know, he was just transported right up there by angels. And when he was standing there, he said, God sent out several people to meet him, people that he knew on this earth, people from his church that had died and gone to heaven also. And 
there was one, he said the one that was really important for him was uh, his, his grandpa. And, and Pat Robertson said it was so cute, he says, was it your grandpa? He says, yeah. He's, and uh, his grandpa's name, or his grandpa came out and he says, hi, Donnie. And he, he says, hi, you know, like this. And it was really thrilling because he was, he was there at the time when grandpa passed from this earth into heaven. And, but one of the things that Pat was talking about was so glorious was, he was just asking me, he says, what is it like to be in heaven like that? And he says, the sounds and the, the voices and the, the smells and the colors were just so abundant and so abundant, you know. And he says, the aromas, you just can't imagine the aromas that will be there, that are there. And you could hear people or hear th singing going on. You know, and he was saying it was like 10,000 songs, but yet you could hear it. It was all in harmony. It was all just pleasant. And... You know, and he was talking about, he says, were there angels? He says, oh, yes, all kinds of ministering angels. Angels were, were there to bear us up and to help us because, see, God made us in his image, man. But he didn't make the angels in his image. They were there to be help, helpmates and, and servants to us, to help us along. And there's, you know, even like right now, there's angels all around you that are ministering to you. We can't see into that unseen world, but yet it's there, you know, and, uh, but, you know, it was so cute what Pat Robertson said one time. He said, he says, why'd you come back? <laughs> and Don was so cute. He said, he says, I didn't want to come back. And <laughs> he said, it's just, when you're there, you don't want to come back. But yet, what had happened was, there was another pastor, say, an hour later or something, come down the road, and he saw the accident. Another pastor from that same conference. And, and uh, he asked the paramedics, he says, is there anybody here I can pray for, you know, the sick and that? <clears throat> and uh, they said, nope, they're all, you know, been transported off. There was none seriously injured. And they were gone. He said, all we have is a dead man, and he's over in that car. And they had... It was raining that day, and the car was just smashed, and they threw a tarp over it. God spoke to him and said, Dick, go over and pray for that. Go over and pray. Pray for him. And he kind of like, never thought of praying for a dead man. You know, it's kind of like, what if God would ever say, tell you to do that? Would you be ready? Just thinking of that. <clears throat> but So he goes over and starts, <clears throat> lifts the tarp up, goes down there, and he starts praying for the dead man. He knew it was Don. And he started praying, and he started singing. And they were singing songs. And pretty soon, it was like he said, pretty soon, Don had come back from heaven, came back into that car, and started singing a song with him. And he, he kind of like, <laughs> I'm sure he kind of like freaked out. But he, <laughs> he goes over to the paramedics, <clears throat> and tells him, he says, hey, there's a dead man over in that car singing, you know, and, you know, they're kind of like, yeah, right. But they go over there, and <clears throat> sure enough, he was alive. He had come back, his body had come back to life. And it was, it was terrible. He said the amount of time he had to spend in the hospital was really bad. His arm was severed off, and it was in the back seat, and they brought it, and they, I don't know, somehow stitched it all back up, and got use of it, but he had a leg that was big old pieces of his femur was all gone, and they had to put halos on it and help it grow for months and months, and it was just painful and miserable. And he, he never mentioned any of this, he said, to anybody when he was in the hospital because it was just so hurting and terrible, and he didn't want, it was so glorious, and this was so bad, he didn't want, but he, a friend, like about a year later, was talking to him and said, you know, was talking about this, and he started sharing. He says, you know, he really saw the impact of it. And since then, what God has done is brought a ministry for him where he goes around and he talks to people, you know, and shares and life's experiences. And he's been all around the world sharing and things, you know. And uh, it's really been, you know, a ministry that, that God has 
been using him at. And, you know, as I was sitting here, I was kind of going, why am I talking about all of this? And then all of a sudden, God was just reminding me, you know, our son, which was 15 years old, was killed in a car accident also. It was right around this area here. And this was... 1987. In 1987. So it was 89. And uh, he was riding a motorcycle, and <clears throat> he was on the wrong side. He was definitely in the wrong. And it was only 25 miles an hour, but he hit a front of a car and right here in his chest. And what it did, it ripped the arteries right out of his heart like that. And, you know, one of the boys was trying to give him CPR and everything, but they said his face shone. You know, and there was a smile there. And I really believe, you know, that God at that time, the angels just came down and swooped him up and took him to heaven. You know, we, we went through a grieving time. We never have gone through anything like that in our life, you know. And how our family was changed. But yet, you know, going through it, how um, the unmerited favor of God will hold you up and take you and hold you. It was, it was a rough time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, we have two daughters and then the one son, and they're all within, you know, like five, four to five years apart. No, <laughs> or three and five years. Three, three and five. Three kids in five years. Five years. So, and he was the youngest, like that. You know, and, <clears throat> you know, it was a, a time of, of grieving that came over, and, you know, stuff, Grieving, you're kind of going, I've never really grieved like that before. But yet God was showing us, you know, that in those valleys down there, you know, he is faithful. He'll, he'll keep you and he'll, he will hold you up, even in your sadness and your tears. And, you know, um, while I was reading about this book, I was telling about it, it was just recently that, I heard this interview on the YouTube, and now, you know, hearing it now has so much more meaning, you know, of what we've, we've had to walk through, and the reality of heaven. It is so real, you know, it's a, it's a real reality. It's not just something far off in the, in the distance. It's there, and we're going to be there. We're either, we all, you know, it says it's appointed unto man to die once, and then comes, you know, it's appointed for all of us to die. And once we die, the only thing that's going to matter why we're in heaven is because we've trusted Jesus or we haven't. We've trusted the finished work that Jesus has done or we haven't. And if we have, he gives us everlasting life to be with him forever. The people that haven't trusted it will spend everlasting life in hell you know, departed from him because they've rejected that name and that work that Jesus had done for them. You know, it, it's sad, but it's going to be a real reality, you know, with it. And so sometimes, you know, when we get a, we hear about heaven and things like that, it's real, you know. <clears throat> it's really, really real. And he says he's gone to prepare a place for us. And that place is so glorious. I heard the other day, it was, uh, you know, it's going to take all eternity to just, all eternity, and we'll never exhaust the love of God, how much he loves us, and how much he cares for us, and the depths, and the, the things that he has done for us. And it says, you know, he is a tiring servant that came and wrapped that girdle around him, and he wants to serve us in heaven. You know, here we should be serving him. But he has said he's going to be that servant that came. He came as a man just like us to serve us, to, to bless us. And you're kind of going, wow, what a, what a love affair. You know, and you know what it does? It just gives you such confidence and hope that these things are, are real and for, for sure. They're not you know, kind of some make-believe things. And, and, you know, death is one thing that we don't want to talk about. We don't want to talk about death. We don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to, we want to avoid these things. You know, and 
it's just the reason why we want to avoid them because we're afraid. We're afraid of the unknown. But he says, fear not. He says, look at me, see my life. That's the type of life I'm going to give to you, you know, with it. you have any thoughts about when Aaron had died and some of the, some of the effects that it's had on our family? To where I know for yourself, we had one book, it's called Good Grief. And it's like 10 stages of the grieving process. And we read it. It's a real simple little reader, you know, but it really helped us to see these different stages that you're going to go through, be wilderness and, and the different things. But through that, we've gone through, and you've ended up, I think, probably ministering to more people than I have in it. You want to share anything like that? Um, it was very hard on our girls. They had a, mm -hmm. they had a very, very hard time with it. And, um, but I worked at a high school continuation school after Aaron died. And there were a lot of girls there that were having to give up their babies. They weren't married. And they were grieving, too. So we, it was a time where we could, uh, I could help them, and they helped me also. So mm -hmm. and we've worked with moms who have lost children. And so Erin is fine, mm -hmm. and we're growing. And we're growing. <laughs> Um, you know, it's not, or it's like Aaron is fine, okay? What we've been sharing with you about, you know, to see that your sins are completely gone, that God sees them no more, and how this will change your life. See that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are under a teaching, and it's, it's subtle, it, and God bless the pastors that have brought us to that point, but there's more. It was under a, a thing of where a lot, every, when people kind of talk about righteousness, it's really about your, your deeds and actions. You know, it's kind of like based on your performance. Even though that God loves me, you know, he wants me to be, he wants me to be pure and holy. And so, you know, he wants you to stay away from this, stay away from that, don't do this, don't do that. And the problem comes in is there's no power. It's kind of like what the law says. Don't do this. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't do anything like that. But there's no power behind it not to steal. There's no power not to lust. No power in that. And so, you know, it's like with our son, he was messing around with some drugs at 15. And, you know, after he died, you know, we should have done this, we should have done that. We could have kept him over here. All of those things were kept, you know, bombarding our, our thoughts and minds over the course of days. And, you know, and it was all, it was just, it went on for 20 some years, didn't it? Of where, you know, then you'd come along, that little voice would come along are you sure Aaron's in heaven? Are you sure? You know, um, it was all, it's kind of that subtleness there. You know, was he walking? Did he confess all his sins? It was all, see, all those things were up to him. And the enemy uses these things to, to bring fear in your heart. And we had fear in our hearts. Was our son in heaven? Was he truly in heaven? Was he truly, truly in heaven? You know, and you, you suffer with it like that, and you, you kind of just, you get dejected, and you just give up. And you just kind of like, I have to hang with it, you know, and kind of done with that, because it didn't, it wasn't a peaceful time. Even though you knew God loved you, he loved you and everything like that, but fault, uh, Faulty teaching leads to wrong living, wrong believing and wrong living. And when you start seeing the scriptures, you know, like we've been sharing, of where we really start seeing that we have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because when we receive him, he gives us his righteousness. 
and we walk away wearing his righteousness. And you know, and it really started sinking in. It's the same way with our son, because he received Jesus when he was earlier in his life. You know, and his deeds and actions weren't always pure, just like yours and just like mine. But God doesn't judge our deeds and actions. He's already, on this daily basis, he has already judged them in his son. And he says he remembers him no more. So, you know, we start seeing that, and all of a sudden, you know, it's just like the peace of God and hearing, you know, like this testimony of this man, 90 minutes in heaven, really just brought a peace over our heart. For we know and that someday soon we're going to meet the Lord and he'll meet us at the gates, along with Grandpa and all the rest of them. You know, and you talk about what something... Uh, a glorious, glorious hope. You know, probably, probably why we're sharing this is there's, you know, a lot of times these things will come up and what happens is the Holy Spirit will unction you on the inside, you know, and we're sharing this thing. And I'm kind of going, why, Lord? You know, why this right now? But, you know, knowing that there's people in the audience out there in your homes your neighbors that have gone through loss of life, tragedies, accidents, and things. And, you know, is there that, can you look at those families? Is there that blessed hope there or not? You know, even for your own life, is there that blessed hope? You know, if it isn't, you can freely receive it. Jesus is not holding back. He's not holding back and saying, well, based on your performance, I will give you this. No. He's the type of God that says, based on his performance, he will give us this. This is this new covenant of grace that we're in right now. From the death of Jesus Christ on that cross at Pentecost till now, this age that we're living in. His unmerited favor of grace, not based on our performance but based on his performance. My son is in heaven, not based on, on Aaron's performance, but based on Jesus' performance. And Jesus' righteousness was covering him up that day that he went home. It was covering him up the day before, and the day before that, and the day before that. It was a covering that would be never been taken away. You know, but the enemy came along and he hassled us through wrong teaching of seeing different types of scriptures. And that's why we want to share these things with you. So it gives you that blessed hope, that, that hope that it's not just I hope hope, but that hope that's just secure, way, way down deep. You know, that blessed hope. that just to know that you know that you know and that you are his child. You are part of his kingdom. And, you know, as you learn things about him, as you become more familiar with him, and you just, you fall in love with him more and more, it really is a, a love affair. A love affair that's just above all other love affairs. You know, and, uh, and you know, it just, Someday the length and the depth and the breadth of the love of God is so great. And do we catch, take the time and kind of catch it? You know, let it sink inside. Let it, let it sink way down in here. You know, to where when it does, it says, it will bless. It will bless you. You will feel it. Your spirit will feel it and your body will feel it. As, you, as you're hearing about this wonderful Jesus, you know, it's tugging on your heart. And, you know, the only reason we're sharing this, uh, we're a couple living here in America, you know, making a living. I'm a carpenter. My wife's a housewife. And, you know, um, you know, these stories that we've gone through, you know, God is calling us out and tell him to say, share it. It's time to share it. You know, and this is new to us. 
you know, and we're kind of going, okay, Lord, you know, we will. And we'll share, you know, our experiences with you. So that it gives you hope and gives you to where I can do it too. I can be that person. You know, and until the next time we see you, you know, we just, we really ask for God's blessing upon your life. It'll just be, it'll be a life full of his glory. Full of him. Just full of him. It will surround you, overtake you, surpass you, come behind you. It'll just be a over, over and over and over again. Just call upon his name and just say, Jesus, I want it all. I don't know what it is, but I want it all. And you watch. Watch over the days ahead. That grace, that unmerited favor, favor upon favor, will come and start flowing and flowing and flowing. And so, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When you received him, confess it. And when you confess it, you're opening the gates of heaven to letting that grace come down and flow over your life and flow over your life. You're not going to get fooled of looking down at this earth. That's not where you're at. You were there at one time, but now you are made in the image of God in Christ Jesus. So wear it. Enjoy it. And, you know, we just really, really love you. And I know there's just a lot of things on our heart that we want to share. And so, you know, until the next time, God bless you, and we'll see you again.